Can everyone hear our MC for today? Uh, Padma Kumaras from all around the world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm uh, today's uh, MC, DA uh, Lotus Long Ying. So for our MC, she's unable to switch, uh, turn on her virtual background, so she'll just proceed as such. Today is the 6th of October. So we'll be continuing with our live stream lesson and today we'll be on uh, chapter 5, Practice and Application of the True Buddha Tantric Dharma. And today will be lesson 4, Transforming Your Daily, your daily Life into Cultivation Practices. First, we would like to welcome all Dharma propagators and all and everyone around the world. 
would like to introduce everyone. We also like to encourage everyone to turn on your camera so to allow better interaction. And if you have any questions or any views, you can also share them within the chat box. So today we'll talk about how we can uh, portion out some of our time and see how we can transform our daily life into some of the cultivation practices. Testing, testing. First, let's uh, put our palms together and we pay homage to our root lineage guru, living Buddha Lensheng, lineage gurus of True Buddha School, all Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas, and Dharma protectors. We would like to form Padma Kumara Mudra and recite the uh, Padma Kumara Heart Mantra seven times. Om Guru Lensheng, Siddhi Home. On Gulenshan City Home, On Gulenshan City Home, On Gulenshan City Home, On Gulenshan City Home. Sending the Huifang, Nanghua 以及世界各地的莲花童子们一定要身体力行 Testing, testing. Firstly, let's pay homage to our root lineage guru, Living Buddha Lishan, our lineage gurus of uh, TBS, all Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas, and Dharma protectors of the shrine. Gawei 真佛密法的修行终点全在于入什么大家都应该懂了
观中，指示定。观是什么？啊，这个是啊，这一个是啊，观智慧。温迪三，休息场。Testing one two three。师生和宇宙之间，内外融合，此时代表着什么？啊，有人啊，相应入定啊，应该是入入定。And now we are doing a recap of the previous lesson. 全无。瑜伽啊 ，Yoga， 在印度梵文本意。And right now, moving on the preface. So the original meaning of yoga in Sanskrit is attaining spiritual responses. So as such, in the practice of yoga, many actions are naturalized. That is, in the daily life of a practitioner, cultivating practice would need to come naturally, and this aligns with the cultivation of yoga. So yoga is attaining spiritual responses. So, uh, this actually means that our cultivation practices it has to be aligned with our daily life. So, uh. So Hui Hai, um, Zen Master Hui Hai actually responded to a lawyer Yuan on the question on how a monk actually still needs to cultivate diligently. So he actually responded, "You can eat when you're hungry. You can sleep when you're tired." And you're like, "Oh, actually, this is what uh most people are like." Does this mean that uh they are actually diligent like the monks? Uh, but Master Hui Hai actually said that it's different because when it's time to eat, they don't eat properly. Their minds are always thinking about other things. And when they sleep, they don't sleep well, and they have plenty in their mind. So diligence is different in this front. So this story also tells us that. So in terms of daily habits, while it is uh for a practitioner is is similar to other uh people, but the difference actually lies in the mind. So having our mind focused on Buddha Dharma and integrating it within our daily life, maintaining mindfulness in every single moment, this is the crux. And this differs uh from normal people. In cultivation practice should not be deliberate, and that is to say, if you have been practicing diligently, this is not some. This should be something that comes naturally, and this would form true integration of one's daily life and cultivation practice. So it would mean that having the right thoughts, it means that we will um continue to maintain mindfulness in every single moment. 
个心中，自然他就有这个慈悲心，而不是刻意造作出来的。Which is like, uh, for example, when we have a bodhisattva, which is the 慈悲心 while we practice it normally, and it will, uh, be part, it will be a natural part of our life, and it will come naturally and not deliberately. So there was once a uh, Devadatta actually felt you and different doctors came, prescribed him a lot of medication, but he didn't get any better. So the Buddha himself uh, went to visit him. But one disciple of a uh, Buddha actually stopped Buddha and said like, Buddha, why must you visit uh, Devadatta? He tried to harm you many times and even tried to kill you. And it will be dangerous for you to visit and let us go on your behalf. But then Buddha said, He is still, and for me to visit him is actually, is actually right for me to do so. To be kind to some, but treat others as enemies is against my own principles and against uh, some of the dharma that I have preached. All sentient beings are equal. So while Teva Data had a lot of um, evil thoughts and tried to kill Buddha, but Buddha don't actually see him as an enemy and advocate uh, that we should be compassionate to everyone. And, if, and Buddha also said that if I treat Teva Data with selfless love, Devadatta's illness will be cured immediately. And true enough, uh, after visiting him, Devadatta's illness disappeared immediately and he regained his health. And he then told his disciples, Buddha told his disciples and said, remember that we should treat all sentient beings equally. There should not be any form of discrimination. And this is something that all uh, practitioners should have naturally to remain compassionate to all sentient beings. So this is actually one iconic story on how compassion has no enemy. And now let's move on. Transforming your daily life into practition, into cultivation practices. So the normal diet of practitioners may include meat, plants, minerals, they are all living things. It is therefore advisable to perform a uh, deliverance practice before offering to them to uh, Buddhas, Bodhisattvas and Dharma protectors. And practitioners should also partake the food with a grateful heart. So we know that for uh, tantric practitioners, we need to do deliverance and offering before partaking in a meal. And a cultivator eats three pure meats. So the three pure meats were actually refer to number one, when it is not seen when it's being cured for oneself. Number two, when it's not heard when it's being cured for oneself. And third, when it's not cute for oneself for our own enjoyment. So we need to actually form the Great Ocean Deliverance Mantra and recite the Manjushri Bodhisattva's Rebirth Mantra seven times. So if it's a, and we also visualize the animal form of the meat ascendant to the void. So if it's a chicken, then we, we actually visualize uh, the animal, the form of a chicken and then going towards uh, Amitabha Buddha. And then we recite the Manjushri Bodhisattva Rebirth Mantra, Om Abelahong Kamchala Soha, and then we visualize the animal form of the meat ascending, ascending to the void. 
So in this case, if you are not sure what kind of meat you are eating, you can visualize spots of white light instead. So before consuming the food, you should actually perform this ritual. An, an elevated level of cultivation practice, one can actually use the nectar from one's body as food. So on this divine water practice, this might be uh, un still unfamiliar to some of us. So we have Master Yin Yi here to do a brief summary. This is actually based on what GM, and GM has actually shared as part of his Dharma talks. So this practice teaches that on a daily basis, either in the morning or afternoon, we will rotate uh, our tongue to actually stimulate uh, our saliva 9 to 21 times. So the rotation would be 9 to 21 times. So this method will actually help to eliminate uh, issues like gastric problems if you practice this frequently. So when the saliva actually fills your mouth, you can stir it with your tongue to create bubbles and then swallow it once it actually reaches your stomach. So once it's being absorbed by your stomach and your intestines, uh, the saliva will be distributed to all major organs to nourish them. Your kidneys will not deteriorate so quickly, or if you have other issues like lung problems, kidney liver or weak heart, all will be nourished. And one should actually swallow 9 to 21 mouthfuls every day and this will actually form the divine water practice. And thereafter, the next level would be cultivating qi, where one would actually use qi as food to nourish the physical body. One can actually think what is actually the best form of food and actually is uh, air. So like if we go if we go to the uh, Rainbow Temple in Seattle, the air there is actually really excellent. So it was mentioned just now that the divine water practice it can be practiced together with the treasure vast chi practice. And this was actually mentioned by a GM before on the practice of the treasure uh, vast chi practice. So yeah, so Grandmaster has also talked about a lot of peeps on this uh, practice of the treasure vast chi. So you can look it up. Now on the cultivation practice of clothing. So using clothing worn by the practitioner normally, so one can form the mudra of the Vajrapani and recites the mantra, which is the armor protection mantra and visualize the clothing becoming an armor. So this is akin to doing the boundary uh, protection.
So you can put the, the you can form the mudra and actually place it on the or in, on your own clothing. And you can visualize the blue light being radiated and emitted on the on the piece of clothing itself. And the next level of practice will be cultivating qi and the kundalini fire. And once you have successfully cultivated the uh, kundalini fire and pure radiance, the fire and the radiance will envelop the practitioner and this is considered genuine clothing. So this would really be one's uh, true boundary protection. Next is on cultivation practice of speech. A practitioner must always be careful about one's speech, be gentle, soothing, kind, and truthful in one's speech when dealing with both people and matters. So in our daily lives, Master Lin Li actually thinks that speech is, in terms of cultivation practice of speech, this area is really important. So it will be key to, to reduce on any uh, unnecessary speech in our daily lives. We try to be gentle, be more compassionate, and this is quite important in our speech. Oh, Master Lianyi actually came uh, across a video online. So there was actually like a car accident that happened. And when the when the um, car accident happened, one of the, the female drivers actually came out. So she was actually driving uh, a branded car and, and that branded car actually hit uh, like another truck delivery truck and the driver came out and scolded the scolded the truck driver really badly using words that are really hurtful so there's also a, a saying that uh, someone is really poor for an, uh, for to the extent that they only have um, uh, money. So this is actually to actually critique one's um, level of uh, morality as well and character. And Master Lian Yi would also like to share a joke with everyone. So someone actually mentioned that oh the other person uh, is really boring. That person is just uh is there fishing from day to night for the whole day, but actually never managed to fish anything. And another another third party asked like, oh, how did you know? Oh that person replied like, Oh, we actually I actually watched that uh fishing person from day to night. So we try not to do um, useless things and say useless words. So if one has actually broken an oath, one should just uh, keep silent and not say anymore. 
And when the practitioner mind is truly purified, his words are true words. So when the so apart from words, uh, we will also need to purify our thoughts. And this is some something that we should uh usually we would need to constantly remind ourselves. Because in terms of thoughts and words, whenever we have such thoughts or we actually say those words, there is some form of energy within. So we should avoid spouting any form of nonsense or have any um, unpurified thoughts. Next, we move on to the cultivation practice of the body. A practitioner uh, must pay great homage to the shrine and the void, circumambulate and pay homage to temples, stupas and shrines. So Master Lin Yi actually recall when he went to uh, Tibet for pilgrimage, she actually saw two unique phenomena. So two sites, one, one would be um, people doing homage uh, prostration in front of the temples, whether is it big or small. The other side is people reciting mantras while holding on to, uh, whether holding on to your chanting beads or actually circumambulating around the temple in a clockwise direction. In this homage prostration, actually, um, start from their own houses all the way to some of the temples or places of worship. And this is a form of respect towards uh towards the Buddhas or Bodhisattvas. And it also helps to eliminate some of the past hindrances and also karmas. So by doing this, the body of the practitioner will gradually be purified. The body feels serene, peaceful and calm. This is also a form of purification of the body. So more importantly, in the process of doing so, our mind will also uh, be focused, be eased and also purified and not easily affected by uh, any external sounds and our body will remain very peaceful as a result. So this is a form of uh, cultivation practice of the body. And it's a cultivation practice of the mind. So a, a practitioner who meditates frequently will gradually enter the state of great joy and experience purity, radiance, emptiness, and finally enters the great perfection state. So in terms of uh, practicing meditative stability, mind the mind would actually be key. So having uh, entering this great state of great uh, this state of great joy and experience. Uh, purity, radiance, and emptiness would be important. And apart from that, it would be good if we can actually uh, grow and develop uh, the Buddha uh, actually wisdom. And in the result, hopefully, we are, we are able to uh, turn around 
uh, unpleasant situations and be unaffected by our external environment. And at this point, all actions of the practitioner, be it uh, walking, living, sitting and lying down, they are all forms of meditation and cultivating meditation is actually cultivation of the mind. <clears throat> Next, we move on to the cultivation of Dharma practices. A practitioner must actualize their practice in order to understand the Dharma, be focused and practice in sequential order, start with preliminary practice to be followed by the Guru Yoga practice, the Idam practice, the practice of the Chi, Meridian and Bindus, Dharma protector practice, sacred practice, and finally, the great perfection practice. So from the practice of the Chi onwards, this would be more of internal practices. Anything before that would be external practices. And if you practice in accordance with the Dharma and uphold the precepts teachings, by practicing step by step, enlightenment will be verified. And this enlightened realization is the Dharma. So at every step, after every practice, it will be important to uh, have a spiritual alignment before moving on to the next practice. Next, we move on to cultivation practice for the benefits of others. A practitioner should put our benefiting sentient beings as being foremost and having loving kindness towards everything. And rely on Mahayana teachings to develop bodhisattva and practice our selflessness. And do not only care for just oneself, benefit others and help others as well. So we should always maintain this um, mindset and also a heart. There's a story 100 years ago in uh, England, in the uh, suburban areas, there's actually a farmer actually heard uh, heard that a, that a little kid actually fell into the water and was shouting for help. And the farmer immediately went to save the kid. He then realized the kid was uh, someone from a noble family. And the next day, the, the, the noble family that the kid belonged to actually brought a lot of gifts to thank the farmer. But the farmer didn't want them because the farmer actually said that this is something that he should do. Anyone who actually fell into the water and would need help, he will, he will uh, immediately provide assistance. And this noble family actually said that this uh, farmer has a really kind heart and actually suggested that since the farmer actually has uh, his son, whether he can support his education, support his son's education. And, and then uh, this, this farmer actually agreed in consideration of his son's uh, future. So then uh, this noble family actually brought the farmer's son over to the city side to further his education. And 
And this uh, son, after receiving formal edu receiving formal or better education, uh, he actually managed to get the Nobel Prize in um in the in the field of medicine. And at that time, the oh the 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 son from the the Nobel uh, the son from the noble family actually fell sick, and he was actually saved by he was actually saved by the farmer's son. So you can see this uh, karma happening. So each saving each other at different points of time in life. So this actually tells us that whenever we help uh, others, it is also it is also helping ourselves in return. And cultivation with great compassion. A practitioner must possess great compassion, treat your enemies as your parents and elders, love sentient beings as you would love yourself. So having compassion is something that all practitioners should have. And this is also what GM has always been teaching us. So like what Master Lin Yi had uh, shared earlier, so compassion actually has no enemies. We should actually love everyone as how you would love yourself. And treat all worldly things, for example, house, car, jewelry, and money as a manual. And, be, and do good, be kind, be generous in giving to others. To be able to give up all worldly matters is, is actually great compassion. So another story, uh, someone actually dreamt of a Guan Yin Bodhisattva. And Guan Yin was actually walking on the beach with him. So this practitioner always believes in the Guan Yin Bodhisattva. And can and is always able to see a uh, Guanyin Bodhisattva around him or her. And at his uh lower state of life, he actually asked a uh, Guan Yin Bodhisattva. Oh, oh, why, why do you uh, actually leave me behind? So Guan Yin Bodhisattva actually uh, said that the, the pair of um, footprints left behind, that, that, is, act, that is actually uh, from Guan Yin And, and Guan Yin actually explained that uh, this is a form of help that uh, she has actually extended to him. So having, having great faith in uh, Buddha and also Bodhisattva, it is very important. We shouldn't have other thoughts whenever we face challenges in life with the vows that were being made by Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, uh, they will really help us to overcome these uh, obstacles in life. Oh, okay. 
Yes, now is uh, time for a little quiz again. So here are the instructions for the quiz again. So depending on which language channel you are most familiar with, you can you can uh, proceed to enter the respective codes that you see on the screen. So the links are provided in the chat box or you can uh, directly key in www.menti.com and key in the code. So we encourage everyone to participate in the quiz so that it can actually help us to remember some of the key learnings from Master Lien E's lesson earlier. So if you uh, didn't manage to join on Venti Minter, you can still key in your answers via the chat box. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh, and question one. In the cultivation practice of food, Practitioners would perform deliverance practice before offering them. Please select the, in, the incorrect item to perform the deliverance for. We have uh, A, minerals, B, plastic, and C, meat. And the answer is B, which is plastic. In the cultivation with great compassion, practitioners must possess great compassion and treat what things as manure. A. Enemies, B. Parents and elders, C. Worldly things. And the answer is actually C, which is worldly things. And next, we'll move on. We'll take a look at the, the ranking board. So over at the Chinese channel, we have Adama brother Lao Zhong leading the current round. And next, let's move on to take a look at the Indonesian channel, see who is currently leading. We currently have Dharma brother, brother Lie Kang. And over at the English channel, we have Lotus Me. And later, we will come back with the second round of the quiz segment. And we thank uh, DA Lian. And next is, uh, we move on to the four yogas of walking, living, sitting and lying down. 
in our daily life, whether one is walking, living, sitting or lying down, these are all acts of cultivation practices. So when one eats, one performs offering practice, one sleeps, one performs sleeping in the radiance practice, one exercises, works, performs dharma activities, besides mantras or sutras, all these are cultivation practices. So if one remains single-minded and focused in our daily life and carry out the activities in accordance with Buddha Dharma, these are all cultivation practices. And food yoga, this actually refers to the yoga of eating meals. So in eating yoga, one visualizes oneself becoming the idam. And uh, next, after the offerings have been blessed, we then offer them to all Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, all heavenly deities, and then all sentient beings of the six realms. At the end, you will then proceed to eat the food. So this is actually how food yoga is about. Next is uh, bathing yoga. When bathing, you will visualize uh, the water from the shower head transforming to become the great compassion Dharani water. So using by reciting the great compassion Dharani mantra, we will bless the water before taking a bath. And this is the bathing yoga. So apart from this, there are many other methods of bathing yoga. They are all used to removing uh, karmic in obstacles or hindrances. As long as one visualizes the water becoming the great compassion, Dharani water, and recites the mantra before bathing, this is the bathing yoga. So if one... If one is feeling unwell, um, one can also make use of this feeling yoga to uh, actually remove any form of hindrances. So sleep yoga, is actually a yoga that one practices when sleeping. So in the, the Maha Mudra practice, there is the sleeping in radiance practice, which is sleep yoga. And the most important thing in sleep yoga is resting within one's inherent nature. So real sleep is known as sleep yoga. That is the complete integration of one's daily life and cultivation practices. And this becomes a, a method of cultivation naturally. So one can cultivate the radiance practice when sleeping. Before one sleeps, the practitioner must visualize light uh, emitting from one's body, after which you will sleep within this radiance. So we first visualize that uh, the bed of the practitioner is a lotus and the practitioner is lying down on the lotus itself. The practitioner then pray for blessings of the guru and the idam and recite the mantra. Visualize the, man, the, the practitioner emitting red light from one's throat chakra forming a boundary protection and enveloping the uh, practitioner. So after uh, visualizing the red light, it forms like a red envelope and this will cover the practitioner. So this is the cultivation practice before sleeping and he or she would then sleep soundly until he's awake. And if the practitioner is actually dreaming, he must cultivate the awareness of dream practice. If he's aware that he's in a dream, it's all right to follow the dream. But if he actually encounters something bad in the dream, 
he must be able to hold the reins. And during the daytime when one is awake, one is aware when one is performing wholesome deeds. However, if, if one is in a dream, one will not be able to control one's actions. It is thus important to know uh, one is dreaming and able to control one's actions in a dream. So whether one is awake or in a dream, the actions should be identical. And this is doing cultivation in your dream. And if you are able to do so, it also means that you have reached a certain uh, level of cultivation. And not only must a practitioner cultivate the practice of radiance and stick within the radiance of the lotus, the practitioner must be able to perform um, cultivation practice in one's dream. And this is the second stage. Next is resting yoga. So if a practitioner during and after practice or in between practices feel tired and needs to rest, uh, he or she can practice the resting yoga. So, so when you are tired, uh, it's good to uh, take a break and rest before going on to do your uh, daily cultivation. And this was this yoga was transmitted by the uh, Drogmi Lotsawa Shaka Yesha. So actually the disciples of the of this Yesha included Marpa, who is the ancestral guru of uh, Kagyupa and the ancestral guru of the Galupa, both of which were personally taught by him. And next, working yoga. So during work, a practitioner can also cultivate. In Tantrayana, there is a very simple visualization that is to transform oneself in an instant to become one's uh, idam, which is our personal deity. So this is something that one would need to diligently cultivate. So if one's uh, personal deity is Kuan uh, Yin you can transform oneself in, into Kuan Yin when one is working. One can work and recite the mantra at the same time. And one's thoughts are focused on Kuan Yin and one's mind is uh, focused on reciting the heart mantra. And this is also a form of cultivation. So this will actually then mean that whether we are living, uh, we are sit whether we are walking, we are sitting, le uh, leaping or lying down, working, we are still cultivating in the process. So if one con continues this way, this is akin to the idam or personal deity reciting the heart mantra and working. So when one works, one can also cultivate at the same time. So, so to be able to perform um, this working yoga with akin to be um, having spiritual alignment with uh, our idam, with one's idam. And to be able to do so, it will mean that your level of cultivation has reached uh, quite a high level. And next, we'll move on to the second segment of the quiz. So we have question three in bathing yoga. What should practitioners visualize the water to be before bathing? A. The great compassion Dharani water. 
B. Bath water. C. Hot spring water. Answer A, And the answer is A, the great compassion, the running water. Question four, in sleep yoga, which of the following options is the incorrect visualization? A, the big transforming into a lotus. B, one's body emitting light. C, the earth deity defending the practitioner. C. And we have uh, the correct answer, where is it? which is C. Thank you everyone for your enthusiastic participation. Now let's take a look at the one who has obtained the highest points for each channel. We have uh, Lotus Xiu Qing, Liu Xiu Qing, or the Chinese language channel over at the Indonesian channel we have a lotus shu fang and over at the English channel we have lotus me congratulations to all and thank you everyone your hand the time Back to Master Lian Yi. And we thank uh, the alien. And now we have moved, uh, moved on to the summary section. So integrating both uh, our daily, our everyday life and practices on naturalized cultivation practice. As such, a practitioner who truly knows how to cultivate will know that one's everyday life is cultivation and vice versa. There is no need to be intentional or deliberate. Everything is completely natural. And there is Buddha Dharma in our minds. And we are always utilizing it wherever we are. And using uh, Buddha Dharma to help ourselves. And for true Buddha school disciples, please do not hide in the shrine and cultivate from day to night. So we do have uh, some disciples who are really diligent and just hide in the shrine to cultivate and and not um, embarking on some of the tasks at, and responsibilities, be at home or at work or taking, up, taking care of uh, his or her children, which is uh, not a good not a good habit to have. So for uh, lay practitioners, daily cultivation, daily cultivation takes only 50 minutes. They should also work or study like ordinary people and not act strangely. This is in addition to one's everyday life. One should include 50 minutes to practice the Dharma. So GM has also mentioned that it's good to uh, have cultivation practice at least once a day. In Buddha nature itself is adaptable. Do not cling on to Buddha Dharma. If one does nothing except cultivation, one can become insane due to one's attachment to the Dharma. 
旁听的时候，呃，他的呃字符就呃好像怀怀啊，就就在他旁听摩斯的石头啊，就是他问他你你在呃禅厅做什么？要成佛，然后他在在旁边磨这个石头，然后马祖高一问他。哎，你在磨石头，到底要做什么？要磨成金。所以呢，呃，禅定也不是一直做的，只是在呃你的日常生活。So in terms of um meditation, it is something that we can practice in daily life, but we should not be constantly doing it. It's more important to actually uh keep our mind focused. 啊，而已。So one should be not too attached to dharma, but use it as like a tool to get you to the other end. So as long as one has attained an enlightenment and integrates uh Buddha nature into our our daily lives, this is cultivation. And if one has a low attitude. Use a gradual practice in your cultivation. If one has high aptitude, with a sudden opportunity arising, your Buddha nature will manifest. So there is no difference in this. As such, it can be said that whether one uses a gradual or immediate method in your practice, they are just unreal names which represents a physical form, and、uh, it's only real. Only when one has verified Buddha nature. So using this in、uh, your daily life would be important. So we need to actually hold on to this Buddha nature, and this is exactly how,、uh, in terms of uh, uh walking. Uh, living, lying down, and other areas, we can still cultivate. So there's actually this story. Um, this a、uh, heavenly being actually. Uh, sent to the mortal realm after breaking a law. So、oh, it's actually pushing a rock up to the to the mountain. But every time he he does that, the the rock will actually just roll down back to the bottom of the mountain again. So this is actually like a form of a torture to this uh C four shi. But he actually. 每天呢，我自己想，推辞。He is actually un unwilling to just um uh resign himself to this fate. 我就完成了我的责任。至于这个石头滚不滚下来，这个是。So he will continue to um push the rock up, and he has actually fulfilled his responsibility. Whether or not the rock will roll back down. He will not be too concerned, and having this mindset will mean that the heavenly being they will not actually be able to、uh, punish him in that sense. So this actually led、uh, to Master Lian Yi seeking some form of、uh, meaning. 
So do you do you do you think that actually this action of uh rolling the rock up the mountain is similar to our daily lives? So because it is repetitive, we continuously do the same thing. So actually, for uh us as practitioners, we are the same as any other uh, human beings. But what is different is that we cultivate. So for normal people, they, uh, they would probably not think about um, a liberation. But for practitioners, uh, so for normal people, they might not be they, they might not have um a certain level of wisdom drawing from the Buddha Dharma as they face their daily lives. But for us as practitioners, we are able to apply this wisdom as we um handle handle any matters that we face in our daily life. So we also and this this rock also also represents our responsibilities. We constantly have responsibilities in our life. So while the rock may seem like an obstacle in our life, but it is also here um, to allow to push us to, to attain certain things or achieve certain things. So once we have actually uh, obtained or learned the wisdom from the Buddha Dharma, There is uh, some form of a uh, good karma in everything that we do. So another point that uh, Master Lian Yi is particularly touched about is how how he he didn't want to resign to fate. He continued to perform his responsibilities and maintain his spirit, which is something that we can also learn from. Because for, in order for us to attain uh, some form of spiritual achievement, it is something that has to be done step by step through our, our diligence and stay stay by uh continue to stay within the direction of our spiritual cultivation so having such a, a mindset would be important so actually our fate lies in our hands and lies in our hearts as long as we diligently cultivate Based, based on the uh, Dharma that have been uh, taught to us by a uh, Grandmaster, we are able to uh, liberate from here. And Amitabha, this is the end of the today's lesson. Amitabha, we like to thank Master Lian Yi for his exciting um, deliverance today also. So we have covered various forms of cultivation practices today, be it um, be it a uh, cultivation practice of the food. We have the bathing yoga. We have cultivation body, cultivation practice of the body of the mind, uh, for the benefits of others and also great compassion. And there's also the four yogas of walking, living, sitting, and lying down. 
in the last story actually is something that everyone could relate to and how the rock actually symbolizes a lot of uh, responsibilities that we have to handle in life but at the same time that will allow us to um, further cultivate and achieve further spiritually. And next, we'll move on to the Q&A section. So uh, previously, we had a question. And we will invite Master Lin Yi to um, provide his response. So the first question, Amitabha Master, at what stage of our cultivation can we start practicing the Vajra, please? So based on what GM has said, uh, the Vajra fees can actually help us to can actually help to uh, open up some of our uh, the, the chakras. But if we are looking at some of uh, we are looking at our cultivation practice. We should um look at building the foundation first in terms of internal practices like the Qi Chong Lun. So for Vajra phase itself, once you have actually done the foundation of the Qi Chong Lun, you can have the treasure uh the treasure vast Qi practice. If you actually feel that uh, the chi, uh, if any form of the, the chi doesn't really pass through any part of your body, we can look at practicing the Vajra feast. But before doing so, before uh, practicing one would actually need to receive uh, empowerment from Grandmaster and seek his advice before starting the practice. What, second question is, what is the authentic permanent emptiness, which is the authentic Dharma realm? So in terms of uh, Buddha nature, it is some form of uh, emptiness. So, um, so this any any forms of um so any sites that we see it is uh actually they are impermanent and ultimately it will actually become emptiness. Uh, uh, we move on to the next question first. So in our daily life or when working, when we start, we, we will visualize um, spiritual union with the Idam and recite the heart mantra. But later on, we will forget. So what can I do? So for um for for human beings, it is actually um, difficult to use our mind and perform two things at the same time. But if you 
做做好，做做了一下你忘记的，其实也不。So after sitting a while, if um you actually forget forget um so when one would actually perform the visualization, visualize the idam and then then perform the heart mantra, and in the process you actually forget any aspect. You can just repeat the same thing, and with this practice, one would naturally would naturally feel that、uh, your idam is is with you. So it doesn't mean that once you have visualized spiritual union with、uh, your idam, and you're able to then. Uh, proceed to do about to go about your daily life. Sorry, I mean that is is normal um for us to be distracted by our external environment, despite uh the initial visualization of the spiritual union with our idam. So the more the key part is to actually、um, practicing many many times, and in the process we are able to be able to do it more naturally, and it will help to set a solid foundation. So what are the specifics in the yoga cultivation transmitted by the Jogni Lotsawa Shakya Yesha? So this is actually this is actually a form of the ah、uh, Maha Mudra. So it's actually different forms of ah.、Uh, So this will ultimately start with the foundation of um practicing mindfulness. Only after practicing mindfulness, then you're able to enter meditation. So mindfulness is actually the key to all forms of uh dharma. So with with mindfulness, one would able to um. Would go into the different cultivation practices in Dharma. Lu是法，没有修，就是是法。啊，这个也是啊，属于离系。离开游戏，第三个是意味，你跟你的佛心已经合一了，就变成意味。再进一步，就叫做无修。那时候你是无修而修，你虽然没有修，但是。藏在禅定之中，所谓大手印的修行，就是一步一步来。所以我理解卓敏。So if we look at the Maha Mudra, it's actually four different stages of cultivation. So if we look at the yoga trans, uh, yoga cultivation transmitted by Jogni Lotsawa Shakya Yesha, it is actually related to the Maha Mudra. So if if you are interested, you can look at that. This,呃，不是说呃，是金钱如粪土了，而是因为我们在这个沙婆世间呢，金钱还是有它的价值，因为它本身是中心的嘛，因为在这个当中，只是我们不要呃成为金钱的奴隶啊，我们要三家利用
So while it's important um, to actually, so this is actually some form of approach. It doesn't mean that we would just um, lose, we, would, we should just uh, lose touch of it or we just, uh, because we actually do need money as a form of resource and uh, go about doing our daily life or doing uh, maybe some form of donation or thought. So it is actually a, a process of... Um, so, so it is important to have the mindset of actually accumulating these resources to do good and not use it um, in an unwise manner and do... Yeah, so it, we should actually use these resources meaningfully instead. So not to have attachments and not to have desires to have more. So, okay, so whether we are looking at praying wheels, it is similar to uh, having our chanting beats. So actually, while we have our chanting beats or we have our praying wheels, it's more important to actually turn our inner uh, Dharma wheel. So actually, um, Holding on to any exterior object, whether it is the praying wheels or is it our chanting beats, is also is actually mainly to help us to practice mindfulness and keeping our mind focused. And expanding from there, allowing it to um, develop compassion, gain wisdom and develop from there. So, whether the Maha Mudra, whether it's an internal or external Dharma, Soyin so for this question, we will we will seek further clarification before responding to that. Because until the second stage onwards, uh, it will likely need empowerment as it requires PIF instructioners. And we will we have come to the end of today's lesson. If you have further queries, we will actually collect them and we will invite our Master Lin Yi to answer them. And now let's invite Master Lin Yi to say goodbye to everyone. And firstly, let's put our palms together. We pay homage to our root lineage guru, living Buddha Lin Shen for blessing today's lesson allowing to be smooth in general and we sincerely give our thanks to our honorable chairman master chen Zhu, our education director master lin he our pr director master lin jia master lin fei all master senior reverence reverence dharma instructors and assistants fellow disciples um fellow translators interpreters and mc Everyone, good day to all. We hope that everyone will be able to learn together and grow together. And good health to everyone. Amitabha. Omani Peniho. And we'd like to thank Master Lin Yi today for his lesson. 
you would like to thank uh, uh, DI Itai for facilitating the Zoom lesson. We would like to thank our masters. We have all Dharma, um, Dharma propagators for facilitating the lesson. And we'd like to thank all our back end supporters. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Amitabha to all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah.